Truth is, I am Iron Man. Hello YouTube, uh, this is Monday, May 3rd, and this is my review of Iron Man 2. Uh, this is a movie I've been waiting for for a very long time, and it was finally released here in the UK uh, this past Friday. I think it comes out in the US this coming Friday, so if you're in the States and you don't want to be spoiled, I absolutely understand if you want to turn this video off now, come back on Friday and watch it. That's your warning, I'm starting spoiling right away. Okay, uh, the movie I thought was really, really good. Um, it wasn't as good as the first, I'll start off by saying that. Uh, it was not as good as the first movie. Uh, I thought it took a while to get uh, a while to get going. It seemed to sort of be rehashing a bit in the start. And uh, there was a lot and a lot and a lot of build-up for the Avengers movie. Uh, you know, for anyone who's seen it, Obviously, hopefully you will have at this point. Uh, you uh, you get a scene where you'll see Captain America's hammer. You get a scene where Nick Fury will come and try and convince uh, Tony several times, in fact, to come and join the Avengers Initiative. Uh, you'll get a scene. There's a scene after the credits uh, where the Shield guy, whose name escapes me, the Shield agent from the first movie, who was also in this movie, uh, Coulson, that's his name. Uh, is out in New Mexico and finds Thor's hammer has crashed to Earth. Uh, so yeah, it's lots and lots and lots of build up for the Avengers movie, and I think in parts there is a little too much build up. It sort of felt like either just give me the Avengers movie now, or let me enjoy Iron Man two for now, and it sort of it struggled to find that mix. But those are my complaints. Beyond that, uh, I will start with everything that was amazing about this movie. <laughs> okay, uh, Mickey Rourke for one. Mickey Rourke uh, plays Whiplash in this movie. He's sort of a, he's a mixture of, for those of you who know the comic book stories, he's a mixture of Whiplash and the Crimson Dynamo. Uh, he's played by the original Crimson Dynamo's son, uh, Anton Vanko, who is sort of referenced in the movie, of course, is the original Crimson Dynamo, and uh, Ivan... Uh, Ivan Vanko, who is uh, Mickey Rourke's character in the movie, uh, is basically coming back to try and fulfil his father's legacy. Um, yeah, Mickey Rourke is really good in the film. I think he's a, a much better villain than the villain in Iron Man 1, and a much more believable villain. And also uh, Sam Rockwell, who is the other antagonist in the film. He's sort of uh, the anti-Tony Stark, I suppose. He's a... Uh, He's not as fun, he's not as interesting, he hasn't got as good a way of words, and he's not as good an inventor. Basically, he, he, he's everything that Tony's not, and he really regrets it. And I'm a big Sam Rockwell fan, and I think Sam Rockwell really impresses here. Uh, Robert Downey, as always, is amazing. I don't think he's made a movie in the last five years that he hasn't been brilliant in. I loved him in Iron Man 1, I loved him in Sherlock Holmes, I love him in this. Uh, he brings this... He brings everything, I think, to every role that he plays, and you can really tell that he's bringing everything to the table here. Uh, it's a step up from the first film for him, definitely, and you sort of you see him struggling against the uh, the problems with all the toxicity in his blood from the uh, from the Iron Man suit, and you really believe that he is in pain. You really believe that he's struggling and that he believes he's going to die. He is a really he's a totally broken man in a way that he isn't in the first movie. But he has to try and keep up this public persona of being Tony Stark, of being the world's protector. And watching him try and struggle to live both lives is a really uh, clever link in the movie. Scarlett Johansson uh, joins the cast this movie, uh, and I really think she brings a sex factor to the movie that wasn't in the first one. As much as I love Gwyneth Paltrow, she's uh, she's a very beautiful woman, but I don't think she's as quote unquote sexy as uh, as Scarlett Johansson is ever going to be, and I think that's really something that adds to this movie in particular. Uh, yeah, so they've really upped the ante in this. They have put in a better villain, a uh, just as much action. I've heard people say there's not as much action in this movie. I don't know what movie they were watching. There is a lot of stuff where they are sat around talking, like the scenes mainly in the build up to the Avengers stuff. But there are some pretty big fight scenes. There's a fight scene in Monaco, there is the fight scene between uh, Rhodey and Tony, and there is then the fight scene at the end with all the uh, with all the drones and Rhodey and Tony. And yeah, no, I think that's plenty of action in what is only a two hour movie. I'm not sure how much more people were really expecting to have. 
Um, yeah, so I was really, really impressed with this movie. Uh, like I say, perhaps a little bit too much stuff on the Avengers. As much as I can't wait for that movie to come out, I want to see that movie. You know, I don't, I don't want to have three movies now, because obviously we're going to have Captain America 4, and I can't remember what the third Avenger... I can't remember who the fourth Avenger is. Tony, Captain America, Thor, and the fourth Avenger, who's currently escaping me, have all got to have a prequel movie. And I hope that the prequel movies aren't just going to be, oh, by the way, here's me meeting Nick Fury again, because that's sort of what this movie felt like a little bit. But it was good. It was really, it was really good. I, I, that, is, that is my one complaint of the whole movie really, was was that there was too much Avengers stuff in it. So yeah, uh, I will see you tomorrow when I will finally be reviewing uh, Be Mine by All Caps. I will see you then. Uh, that's all for now.